How you guys doing? Good. 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 Very well. Now you guys have an interesting history. I know that two of you went to kindergarten together and then it went on from there. How did you all of a sudden become where you are today with OAR? Well, uh, yeah, Mark and I, best friends since, uh, yeah, kindergarten basically. Um, we started playing in junior high school. We met Richard and uh, we were basically like uh, cover bands back then and everything. But um, we started writing songs, but OAR songs. 1996. Yeah. Yeah. December. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, we started writing them when we went uh, at, over to Israel. We transferred out of high school, went there for a little while, um, kind of got a lot of themes from there and, and started writing songs when we got back. And uh, ever since, we just, Bench came along and, and Jerry came in the last four years. So uh, he actually officially joined the band a year ago, but he's been playing with us ever since, uh, from like years before. But uh, yeah, we started playing songs way back then, and uh, finally figured them out just about now, and it's, it's looking, it's, it's starting to become a lot of fun, you know? Yeah, we did um, our first CD, The Wanderer, we, we actually recorded in high school, um, and then we went to Ohio State, came back our, after our first year or two, we recorded our second album, Souls of Flame, we met Jerry out at Ohio State, and um, we just recently released our uh, latest CD, Risen. Now your first two recordings, The Wanderer and Souls of Flame, were basically recordings of jam sessions. Um, what prompted you guys to do more of a uh, studio recording for Risen to make it more professional? Well, uh, we had always wanted to do that. It just wasn't really, I guess, an option because we kind of, uh, you know, didn't have the means to really. We, we got the first two together mainly for our friends. It was first uh, a tape and then, you know, we got those going for a while and then it became a CD after we went into the studio a second time and put a few more tracks down and it just kind of snowballed and we always had that idea it just never came about and so when we had the opportunity to get in with uh, real producer John Alasia who's fantastic he's just amazing he did so much for us and with us uh, it was what we had always kind of wanted to have happen. How did you guys pick John Alasia as the person to work with? It's funny how it came about I mean it's hard to even explain. I think basically he was friends of friends and uh, you know through Chris's father who's like the guru of the band I mean he's pretty much guided us through every step of the way. Um, he, he's in the business, he's been in it forever and he, he just knows a lot of people. Um, he he, he kind of pointed us in that direction so years and years he'd be kind of plugging us into his friends saying you know uh, maybe one day you guys can work with them and telling us along the way, hey, you know, you guys need to, you know, practice, play, rehearse, get to know what you're doing before we, he even put us in the same room with people. You know, he basically was watching over us because he's, he's been through it. He's had bands. He knew exactly what to prepare us for. Um, when we did get together with John, it was half favor probably and half uh, <laughs> experiment you know but uh, you know yeah it turned out well and it was an absolute uh, it was a gift man and, and it was a big time humbling experience and uh, you know learned a lot learned that we didn't know anything and, and, and now we know one or two things maybe but still don't you know got a lot to learn about this thing and uh, really just enjoying playing I mean that's what we do is just play and, and uh, leave everything else to you know, a lot of other people and things, but uh, really try to be hands-on too, you know? So uh, learning all the while. You know? well, Richard and Jerry, since you haven't spoken too much here. Yes. Um, what would you say were the biggest challenges about going into the studio for you guys? Biggest challenges? Kind of doing a, I would say doing a pre-production, uh, doing that, because before we just went in and we were like, all right, we got a couple tunes, and uh, this is what we got, so let's go with it, and that's it. And so going into the studio with John, we had to kind of prepare tracks and stuff and, and, and get ready in that respect. And considering that the, uh, the whole album process itself is done by uh, our manager, Dave Roberts, uh, with us, you know, it's a lot of work and preparation getting the business aspect of it done because uh, he's, he's the uh, guy at the label. We have our, or he has our own his own label, uh, Everfine Records, and uh, we're the only band on it, so it was pretty much a real hands-on experience preparing a record. So, was, what else was tough, was I think, cool. we, we'd record these tracks and we'd think we got it, and um, he'd be like, nope, do it again. And we're like, <laughs> what's wrong with that one? He'd be like, nope, do it again, again, take 50, take, take just, 
It That's was... got to be very humbling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very humbling. Yeah. Yeah. Very humbling. We're used to just like, we had $800. And so it's like, it you guys crazy. have, right? You guys have seven hours, you know, or whatever, 16 hours, 50 bucks an hour. Get in there and play the song, you know? And if it was kind of okay, you know, it's keeper, you know? Yeah. If take two was like, you know, take two is a big deal. I mean, that's like 50 bucks, you know? Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> like, you know, we didn't, we didn't like this way, you know? It was just like, we had all the time and just all day and God, tried a lot of things. And the next one will probably be a combination of all these, all these aspects, you know? Yeah, our first so. two CDs were live studio recordings. Right. So it was basically like, hit record and we'd play. And uh, <laughs> that's it, the first two CDs. Um, which is kind of cool because um, we, um, we think we're at our best um, playing live. Um, Spontaneous. Yeah. And uh, so it kind of captures that even though they're very raw, very raw productions. I mean, they're basically practices on tape we like to think of them as. Yeah. Um, well, you guys have had huge internet sales with all of your albums. Um, and you're not on a major label. And traditionally, radio sales are what drives that. Um, so how did you use the internet as a marketing tool to kind of get the word out? I don't know if we meant to use it. It just kind of worked out like that. Like uh, Napster came about right, right when uh, our CDs were kind of getting out to different parts of the country from our friends in Maryland who had went off to different colleges and stuff. And so, you know, they had, had word of mouth with friends at their new schools. And it just, you know, people were looking on the internet for new music because it was so accessible. And it just happened that, you know, that it was timing that worked out. It just you know, happened that way. Well, also, too, I mean, you guys have just played two sold out shows here at House of Blues, and you have a third one tonight. Um, so you play to compa capacity people all the time. Um, what other avenues did you get the word out uh, by other than the internet? You know, just on the street. I'd say our friends, uh, most. That's where it all started, actually. We'd have um, these friends that were all going to schools all over the country, and they, they'd volunteer to take these CDs with them, um, such as our first CD, The Wanderer, and uh, just play it for all their friends. And um, first they'd take five, they'd call back, we need 20 more, people are buying them. We ship out 20, then 30, then 50, and then next thing we know, it's, it's just, just it's, everything just got rolling. Um, also, we have. Um, an open taping policy if the venue permits it. So that means that uh, kids can come out and record the shows. And, um, and there's a huge, huge group of these, of, like kids who just tape and uh, trade shows between each other. And that was a great way for it to spread. And uh, we have such a, a bunch of loyal guys who come out, they tape the shows, put them up on their computers, and uh, anyone in the country can get a show. So like they have access to all of our live shows. Well, do you guys ever worry that that will prevent people from buying the albums? No, I'm for, like, for some reason, our fans have been so loyal that they'll go out, they'll, they'll, they have access to all the live shows, but they still want to support us and they'll buy a CD or it's two. Actually, yeah, it's actually worked the opposite. Like, yeah. They'll buy the live bootleg, or they'll get the live bootleg, and then they'll go out and buy, you know, the when three records. Well, again, you know. I mean, I think we make it clear that we're not, <clears throat> we're not, uh, you know, with the major label. We don't have this huge tour support. We don't have all these, you know, resources and everything. I mean, we're building our own resources. I mean, our manager is, you know, picked up doing this just his first time, you know, and everybody about it's an in-house family. I mean, we make it pretty clear that we like to play. We like to come out. We love to hear people sing. We love to hear them have a good time. So it's like, we're ha perfectly happy. We're all music lovers. We all love taping shows. We all love enjoying shows. So why not get them away? I mean, all of a sudden you can't just stop giving away the music you make, you know what I mean? But uh, I think they realize that, and a lot of people are really into spreading the word of going out and buying CDs, because we're not, we're only putting it into making more CDs. We're not, there's nowhere else to put it. It's going right back into the studio, or right back into, you know, getting gas for the van to go play more shows, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> that's... $20 eggs. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, that's all it goes for, so. Well, how difficult, I know you guys are, a couple of you are done with school already, but how difficult was it to juggle the band duties along with uh, the school duties, getting things done? That was, that was tough. Yeah. Was, you didn't sleep too much, but all it, it, it took was, was uh, kind of just planning and preparing for it, you know what I mean? Like, there wasn't too much room for cramming and, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Uh, how, we, how we toured during, the school year is that we would 
give Dave, our manager, who, who did the booking and then when CAA took over, give them schedules of uh, class schedules, like with the midterms and the finals, all that's mapped out and then weekends that we would need off for certain different reasons and then they'd book around that. And so we'd do two or three shows every weekend, you know what I mean, for, for nine months or so. But uh, so the school was still a priority. Was school, was school, was, school was the first priority. And uh, though some of us didn't finish, we, we, feel, we felt that we had to uh, take the opportunity that we had and, and kind of go out on the road and, and, uh, and uh, bring this music to people that we can't, we can't normally get it to. So as of June 1st or something like that is really the first time that we've gone at the band full time uh, since, its, since its incarnation. So uh, we're looking forward to, to going out on the summer tour and then on the fall tour as well. Well, I see that you guys have an extensive schedule, tour schedule, uh, for the summer. Um, you've been, what, you're two weeks into it now? Or three weeks into it? Has it even started? <laughs> the major chunk, sort of, the major chunk, st yeah. chunk starts uh, mid-July oh, okay. and goes six weeks, like 28 dates or so, yeah, we'll be gone give or take. About a month and a half, almost. Well, how has the response been to the new material so far, the, the people you've played for? You know, it's pretty cool and pretty overwhelming that you know you release a record just a, f a few months ago and you go to the shows and the front row is singing the lyrics to the new tunes and stuff like that and they recognize them and everything so that's that's really cool we we enjoy that yeah mark just wrote a song um really recently cut short a try and um just played it the other night and this guy in the front row was singing every single word we've never I don't know how I mean, from the live words. taping. <laughs> <laughs> live taping, but I mean, if anything, it's probably from the most recent live taping because that song is brand spanking new. Well, in what ways would you say you've grown as as you perform more often, Chris? Well, um, I mean, I think we've gotten better as a band just because we've been playing together um, for so long. We kind of know each other's moves, you know, um, so we're able to read each other really well, which is good because we like to um, improvise a lot. That's part of our big show, part of our live show, is that we like to keep things fresh by just, by never playing the song pretty much the same way twice. And um, other than that, I think it's just been, it's been good that we've been going at a, at, a, at a pace that's comfortable for us. Playing about 10 shows a month over the last couple of years, something that when we were in school, helped, um, helped just pace everything out. It, oh yeah. Do you have a favorite or most memorable show that you've had so far? Yeah, last night. <laughs> what was our memory is pretty short. Sunday. Sunday. Next time I ask you, you'll say yesterday's show also. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday's show was pretty cool. The the kids were really energetic, yeah. man. The whole the whole stage was moving for because of them, and it was yeah, like. You feel the ground shaking when we were playing? It was killing. You know the memorable ones, the Grand Marquis shows. Yeah. Our first shows the most memorable, and then the one, his first official show in Athens, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, I remember that. That was memorable, and uh, <laughs> a little memorable yeah. for Jerry. <laughs> but uh, no, sh every show, excuse me, uh, every show is memorable, it yeah. seems. The like, fun ones are good when we get to play with some of our favorite bands, like uh, Virginia Coalition, or Left Undone, who we're playing with tonight, or Red Wine and Blue, or Ordinary People, or any of those guys, because they'll come up on stage and jam with us, and so. And then we get to hang out with them yeah. afterwards, and it's is, fun. It's is there a band that you'd ever love to play with that's like or open with, that's out right now? Yeah. We all we listen to every kind yeah. of music, so yeah. I mean we just we talk about that sometimes, just to be funny. But uh, God, all kinds of bands. What's you don't favorite? want, yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, song to play live? Do you have one that you guys all just kind of get really excited about? I like Delicate Few Delicate lately. Few. Really? Yeah. Aside from that, everything, every, every song's fun. We won't play it if it's not, so uh, we try to keep things fresh, you know? Like you were saying, I mean, if it is the same song, it, it will not sound the same two nights in a row. Some nights it may, but uh, more often than not, it's definitely new because we do not, set, we don't set patterns, we try not to, you know what I mean? We're on a set list for that matter. Never set yeah, you don't have a set list? <laughs> I mean, usually we're on stage and we're like, what are you feeling now? And we'll all figure out what, yeah. what we want to play. Do people start yelling them out oh, to yeah. you yeah. what they want to hear? That's the worst. We take a little pause and everyone starts shouting. So you brought, brought up Delicate Few. That's actually one of my favorites from the album, too. I like it all, but I like the fact that there's like a music change in there. Mm -hmm. um, was that one of your favorite ones off the album? Or do you have a favorite that... Off Risen. Oh, yeah, Off Risen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if the band likes this as much as I do, but here, here's here's to you. I thought that rocked, and all these guys are like, you <laughs> no. I thought that I thought that was the, the coolest coolest tune off the record. 
And she gone. She gone. Yeah, turned out really fan of she gone. Hold on, true. Mark's voice sounded good. Though. I yeah. think guitars were good in that. And we also re-recorded a couple old songs. I was going to um, ask you, how did you decide which ones um, from Souls of Flame that you would redo for Arisen? I don't know. We, we just kind of picked a couple, a couple, I don't know, crowd favorites, sort of? Or at least a couple tunes that we really didn't do justice to yeah. on the other two yeah. records. Yeah. And we were it, like an actually produced like, song would, would sound like, like a really produced version of it, and, and they come out really produced. Yeah, I mean, we were just trying to really experiment. I mean, try it, try it. We'd never been in a studio situation. Exactly. These songs we recorded were fun, and, and we thought, hey, some of these we could try out in the studio, so we did, and uh, and, the, and we did what we did, you know what I mean? It was, it was fun, and uh, I'm glad we did it, so. Do you prefer one version over the other, guys, with these songs? Well, that's the thing, is that we play it differently live at any time. That's why it's kind of weird to have something stuck on CD. You know, it's just like, Permanent, which is not the case for us. We can do it. We can play songs however we want to. So, I like the way they came out, but you know, I also like that we get the freedom to play them however we want to when we're on stage. I was actually going to ask you guys about your songwriting process. Um, you know, as most kind of jamming is collaborative, does one person kind of take the lead and start going, and y'all go off and create songs, or how does it usually go with your with your songwriting process? Marco, pretty much, he always writes the lyrics to it, and a lot of times we'll come up with a basic chord structure, but we'll all get together and kind of form the song on the whole and really get a feel for what we're trying to hone in on with the feeling and the meaning behind it. So we really all come together as a group and oh, yeah. write the music of it. But lyrics come first, usually? Well, you know, it's funny, there's yeah, never been a time where, I mean, it's rare that someone will say, hey, play this, or, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm playing this, so you have to play this, or anything like that. Nothing's, no music is ever, I don't, none of us write music? No, we don't write music down or anything. It's just kind of like, everyone does their part, it comes together. That's yeah, what's so that, fun about it. We all know each other so well. Lyrics, you know, may come first, and they may not. They, a lot of times, they just kind of develop over improv over every night, and eventually it'll come to a lyric. But. We just Sometimes we'll just play something and you'll flip through like your lyric book and add something. Yeah, I mean like he'll write a song with Richard or Jerry. And then I'll just get the feeling of what it's about musically and then go and, and find some lyrics to go with it. But it's, it's always, a, there's always a feeling involved. That's why everyone like always wants to know what it's about so, uh, you know, we can get that vibe going. But no one ever tells other people what to play. Sometimes they'll advise a little bit, but honestly everyone does their own thing which is cool. So typically when you guys say rehearse, you find yourselves writing new songs immediately, just kind of like going into like a new, yeah. or no rehearsals? No. Rarely. <laughs> Jam sessions, we basically? Were, we just got out of school. I've been with the band so. for four years. I think I practiced with them three times. And that's, yeah, that's right. not saying like we're, we don't need to rehearse. Or no, 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 trust me, no, we're saying, we're just, we just don't seem to get around yeah, to it, which yeah. is not good. It was <laughs> written in school. We, yeah, we've written new songs on stage before, just jamming and just oh, yeah, having yeah, fun yeah. with it, you know? Most of the tunes probably come out yeah. <laughs> And do you stage. remember them after you get off to yeah. do them again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If not, he tapes I usually, I usually tape all the point. shows. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we rehearse in the band. He, he tapes every show and we listen to them. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, with The Wanderer, as you said before, um, it, a lot of it was inspired from uh, your trip to Israel, and then the story of the Wanderer. Uh, with what were some of the lyric inspirations for Risen? A lot of them came also from that same uh, like story themes and everything. Um, some of them were remakes. So it, initially, the theme of the record was supposed to be uh, kind of uh, the third chapter to the whole thing, but uh, it, it didn't quite turn out that way. It didn't somewhat. Um, but you know what, I, they all revolve around kind of like a, a searching themes and also there's some love songs in there. There's also some have fun songs. And uh, the thing about Risen was it was more about our growth uh, as a band, you know what I mean? And uh, didn't really stick too much to the story, but again, we're not gonna stick to anything. We're not gonna make plans. We're just gonna enjoy the fact that we're here right now respect the fact that we're here right now and, uh, and see where it takes us. If it stops today, honestly, this has been the best run ever. So, you know, wherever it goes, it goes, you know. 
I really, I like the feel of your music too. I get this like vacation vibe that I really <laughs> dig about it. You don't get that too much when you turn on the radio. Um, and I've heard you described as roots rock to like reggae and, and all sorts of other, I guess, buzzwords. Where would you file your music if you were to uh, put it in a record store? We tried to categorize it for so long now. I think we all have such, uh, you know, various backgrounds, diverse backgrounds from like the areas we come from. Like DC has just got such a culture of music there. It's just like, there's so much going on there. I mean, we've all had all these different influences. So that's kind of what our music represents is just all these things into one. It's hard to really like label it as one thing. But uh, I don't, I couldn't even say any kind of, you know, like roots rock, reggae rock. It's got uh, all these kind of from, um, Island vibe roots rock. Yeah. But with, what was it he said? It was a, 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 a car crash. A, a touch <laughs> oh, he said it was a... A train wreck. A, a <laughs> driving, lusty train wreck of jam <laughs> with um, Something reggae. A, no, liberal, no, a, a liberal, liberal amount liberal of reggae. Amount of reggae. <laughs> and raw songwriting. It's pretty cool. Wait, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that title in a, in, a, in a music store would be kind of hard to find, yeah. though. Yeah. Like looking around for the big We'll be the only one in the buzzword <laughs> for it. Let us know, because we'll, yeah, definitely, so we'll we definitely use it. Island Vibe Roots Rock. Kind of. I like that, though. That works. Yeah, because it, it was, I don't know how it came up, but it was, it's original, but. Yeah, chances are if you go into a record store, it's under rock pop. Rock pop, yeah. Rock pop, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's under rock, or rap. rock. Yeah, or pop rock. Yeah. Well, we're, give we're hardcore. Rap. We're two shelves down. <laughs> Same <laughs> shit. We're two shelves down. We're usually next to Offspring. Well, guys, if there was one piece of advice you could give to like an aspiring band right now, since you guys have had a good success story so far, what would it be? Get out there and keep playing. Just uh, get your music out to as many people as you can. Just do everything you can to make that happen. I mean, it's not impossible to you know like make things happen for yourself. A lot of people think it's just a ton of stuff, but I mean, it's just work. I mean, yeah, there was no really marketing secret or anything like that. All, our, our manager, Dave, uh, just basically read a lot of industry books and, you know what I mean, set out the marketing plan, the booking and everything like that of the band through reading industry books that you can pick up in Barnes & Noble. And that, on a management aspect, that's all he did. You know what I mean? There's no rocket science or secret or, or muscling around or anything like that. It was just hard common work. sense, yeah. hard work, reading from a book. And as far as from a musical standpoint, uh, I just I don't know. I just think the band kind of taps into something that that uh, people people can relate to. So yeah, and, and and Carl, his father, he always told us a long time ago before. And I mean, we were playing locally and loving it. You know, he said. You know, don't expect anything, but appreciate everything. And you know, he he just basically pointed out to us that if you're playing in a local bar, and there's those five people there that really enjoy the fact that you're playing and appreciate the time you're spending with them, enjoy it. You know what I mean? And if you learn to do that, then every step of the way you're going to stay grounded. Every step of the way you're going to understand that it, you know it's cliche and cheesy, but it, it's about the music. You know, but it is. You know, just maintain that and. Have somebody there who can watch out for you, and like Jerry said, read them, read the books. You can do it yourself. You don't, you don't need that big company or any of that. So, yeah, and I think we all just love our jobs so much. We love playing more than anything else in the world. We actually start freaking out if we have a couple of days off. We have to be on stage. And I think, um, I know this sounds cheesy too, is that we just believe in what we play and what we're doing, and um, just have a lot of passion for what we do. And I think. Um, I don't know, try to bring that out through the music.